I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Now, today we're reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 39. Let's focus on verses 5 through 8. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. The time will certainly come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your descendants who come from you will be taken away, and they will be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. For he thought, Well, there will be peace and security during my lifetime. Now, sadly, Hezekiah's greatness is clouded by the sin of pride that developed in his closing years. Merodach Baladan, the king of Babylon, wanted aid, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, for a rebellion against Assyria. And he is identified with Marduk Haba Lidina, bummer of a name, who seized Babylonian throne in 721 BC. He was deposed by Sargon of Assyria and then came back to rule again for a short time, about 704 BC. Now, he sent letters and then a present to Hezekiah because he had heard about his illness. After having recovered so wonderfully, Hezekiah was congratulated by the Babylonian king. And the flattery was just too much for Hezekiah. You know, he fell for it. In a moment of incredible stupidity, he showed the foreign ruler's envoys all of the treasure in his storehouses. It was an act of foolishness for which Isaiah gave him a severe reprimand. And there is a strong hint of boasting in verse 3, as though Hezekiah wanted to underline just how important that he was, it, it, that such great leaders would show him so much honor. There is only one explanation for Hezekiah's foolishness, and that is just his pride had grown in his heart. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 25, But Hezekiah's heart was proud. It's not my opinion, it's the word of God. And he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore the Lord's wrath was on him, and on Judah and Jerusalem. Pride is a vice that clenches so tightly to the hearts of men, that if we were to strip ourselves of all faults one by one, we should find that pride is the very last and the hardest thing to rip away. It would have been better had Hezekiah died at the time the Lord appointed than for him to live and to spoil his testimony in this way, and the testimony of God's people. After all, Manasseh, the worst king that Judah had experienced, would ever experience, he was born during Hezekiah's extra innings. Hezekiah made no opportunity to witness to the Babylonian visitors. You don't see him passing out gospel tracts, as it were. Let me tell you about the God of Israel, because all this is is available, but it's only from the Lord. Instead, he boasted, leading to Babylon's eventual overthrow of Judah. I believe Hezekiah's greatest folly was not restricted to showing off the kingdom treasures. His greatest folly was actually the fact that he sought his own glory above the well-being of the kingdom. He cared about what people thought about him as the king that he thought about his subjects themselves. And once the judgment was pronounced against him, Hezekiah concurred that it was good. But in his mind, the goodness had less to do with justice. Oh, are you right? Justice has been served. No, had less to do with justice and more with the fact that he had escaped directly being punished for his sin. He harbored no remorse for how his actions would hurt his descendants. You know, I've met Christian leaders who seemed more concerned with their personal fame than protecting and equipping the next generation. It's incumbent upon us not just to do great things for God. We must also prepare the next generation for greatness. That's why Groundworks Ministries exist, to simply get Christians into the Word so that they would live it, so that they would share it, so that the next generation would be prepared to become image bearers for Christ. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast.
Now, Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations, and yes, we need your monthly support. Donating is secure, and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. Another way to help is just tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with friends and family and on your social media. Of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com. Ministries.com.